Disney's live-action Mulan is an epic action film that's filled with tons of deep-cut references to the original animation. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing 52 of the best Disney Easter eggs and hidden details to look out for in the new movie, plus where to find the secret tributes to the indestructible Mushu. Some spoilers ahead, so take care if you haven't seen the movie yet. The opening Disney logo has been transformed with some cool new details appropriate to Mulan. The iconic fairy tale castle has been given some Chinese style architectural additions. And just behind that is a long wall, a reference to the opening scene of the animated movie where the Huns begin their invasion by scaling the Great Wall of China. A shining phoenix also replaces a shooting star that normally arcs over the castle. A nice touch given Mulan's connection with the mythological beast in the new movie. The shape-shifting sorceress played by Gong Li is a cool new character added to this version of the story, and in her very first scene we get a hint at how her arc will parallel Mulan's, as she disguises herself by merging with the body of a man on the Silk Road, just like our heroine will later pretend to be a man in order to join the Imperial Army. The sorceress's name Shen Yang, as well as her character arc, are also hat tips to a 17th century Chinese novel, in which a princess of the same name captured Mulan, but then they became bonded sisters when Mulan revealed her true identity to her. In Disney's movie, although Mulan and the sorceress start out as enemies, they gain respect for one another and ultimately become allies. Although the sorceress can shapeshift into various forms, she frequently turns into a hawk, and so resembles Shang Yu's falcon sidekick from the animated movie and there are loads of incredible hawk-like details on her costume, from her long feather-like skirt to her belt made from bones. And then there's her fearsome looking hawk crown. She also has talon-shaped daggers that she can toss with deadly force. And she can even grow bird-like claws on her fingers that she uses to slash at her enemies. I could tear you to pieces before you blink. Plus, according to the film's director Nikki Caro, her makeup is hooded like a hawk's in the form of a white mask, with the use of the colour white being significant, because in China white is the colour of death and also the colour of purity. Ming-Na Wen, the voice of the animated Mulan, makes an awesome cameo to the tune of Reflection as she presents her live-action counterpart to the Emperor. Your Imperial Highness, Hua Mulan. Ming-Na Wen's official credit in the movie is as esteemed guest, which is a lovely way to acknowledge the legacy of the original Disney film that the new movie builds upon. If you look at the train of her dress really closely, you can spot a phoenix, another nice detail connecting both Disney Mulans together. More on the other hidden phoenixes and their true meaning in the movie later. And the green and red colours of Ming-Na Wen's ceremonial dress also appear to be a nod to the colours of the outfit that the animated Mulan wore in front of the Emperor, as well as the various shades of green she wore during the animation. Everyone's favourite animated talking dragon, Mushu, may not have made it into the live-action movie, but the filmmakers still wanted to honour him by including ancestral dragons in the film, and you'll find them on various fabrics and weapons. So watch the scene closely when Mulan's father goes to sharpen the family sword, because the stone he uses is wrapped in a cloth with an embroidered picture of a dragon. Also during Mulan's confrontation with the sorceress, you can spot a dragon on the guard of Mulan's ancestral sword. And then there's a dragon on the hilt of the sword that's gifted to Mulan by the Emperor at the end of the movie. There's also a sneaky nod to one of Mushu's most memorable lines from the animated film, when the garrison sergeant tells the troops what will befall them if they are found being dishonest. Disgrace. Disgrace for you. Disgrace for your family. Disgrace for your village. Disgrace for your country. Dishonor. Dishonor on your whole family. Make a note of this. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. And Mulan's new mythological guardian, the Phoenix, is predominantly red, yellow and purple, a hat tip to Mushu's colours in the 90s classic. Another of Mulan's animated sidekicks was Cricky, the allegedly lucky Cricket. Like Mushu, Cricky doesn't appear in the new movie. However, there is a human character called Cricket that joins the army at the same time as Mulan. My mother says I was born under an auspicious moon. Yep, this Cricket's a lucky one! Cricket does seem to have good fortune. Despite all the new recruits being terrible archers, he's able to hit the target even with his eyes closed. And he gets an awesome moment protecting Mulan and clearing a path for her when he takes out two Roran soldiers with one lucky shot from his bow. Like the animated Cricky, he also miraculously survives a potentially fatal accident during the avalanche scene. Man, you are one lucky bug. And again during the final showdown at the Imperial City, to everyone's relief we discover Cricket really does enjoy good fortune, just like his animated counterpart also survived the final battle. You are a lucky bug. 
And fun fact, if you didn't already know, crickets are viewed as symbols of good fortune in China and were kept as pets from early antiquity. However, Cricky was so unpopular among many of Disney Animation's filmmakers at the time of the original film that he almost ended up scrapped from the movie. The ever so memorable musical numbers from the animation didn't make it into the live action version, but there are still numerous references to the iconic songs. The popular I'll Make a Man Out of You is referenced when the garrison sergeant says, We're going to make men out of every single one of you. That's followed by a training montage that pays homage to the scene that accompanied the song in the animation. For example, when the recruits miserably fail to get anywhere near the targets with their bow and arrow, it's very similar to the original film. They also have to carry heavy pails of water up a mountain, similar to the weights they were made to carry in the animation. In the new movie, this bucket challenge replaces the pole climb, and unlike the animated Mulan who struggled carrying weights up the mountain, this new challenge is the one where she shines and proves her worth. The interesting difference here is that it's Mulan's chi that powers her up the mountain, whereas in the animation it was her ingenuity and determination in figuring out how to repurpose the weights that helped her scale the log. At the heart of both the live-action and animated Mulan movies is the idea of being true to who you really are. The song Reflection is a core part of that theme in the animation, and the new movie pays tribute to that with an instrumental version which plays at key moments. So when Mulan is summoned to her commanding officer, as he begins to explain how only the most true connect to their chi, the tune from Reflection is woven into the music playing in the background. The moment is not only a great easter egg, but it also adds an extra emotional layer to the scene, with reflection continuing to play over the montage of Mulan learning to reconnect with her chi and finishing as she reaches the summit of the mountain. And that montage also includes several visual nods to when the animated Mulan sang the song for the first time, as the camera lingers over her reflection in the water and also a nearby magnolia tree. There's also a second musical reference during this sequence with a shout out to a line from I'll Make a Man Out of You, when Commander Tong says, Tranquil with the forest, but on fire within. You'll also hear reflection during Mulan's next big moment, which comes just after her confrontation with the sorceress, when Hua Jun dies and the true Mulan is born. As she looks into her sword, she sees her own reflection together with the word true, and then the instrumental theme strikes up again as she sheds her false identity and reveals her true self. The theme of reflection and being true to yourself is even carried into the very final scene of the new movie, when Mulan looks into the blade of her new sword and sees herself and the phoenix reflected back at her. This is in sharp contrast to the start of the film, just before she meets the matchmaker, when she looks in the mirror and sees a version of herself that doesn't reflect who she really is. Another shout out to the animated movie comes at the garrison when Ling looks at a scroll of a girl, which recalls how the song A Girl Worth Fighting For started off in the animation. That's what I said, a girl worth fighting for. And when the men start discussing who their ideal woman would be, Poe says, I don't care what she looks like. I agree. I care what she cooks like. Very similar to what was said in the animated movie. I couldn't care less what she'll wear or what she looks like. It all depends on what she cooks like. The embarrassing moment from Olan when she enters the tent and Poe drops his towel is a humorous callback to the animation's lake scene, when Mulan had to avert her eyes after Yao climbed onto a rock stark naked. I am Yao, King of the Rock, and there's nothing you girls can do about it. And there's a short instrumental version of the song Honor to Us All, when Mulan is primped and polished to go to the matchmaker in tribute to the original film. The magnolia tree by the lake in the live action movie and the blossoms that the camera focuses on when Mulan goes to bathe are a sweet callback to the magnolia tree from the animated film and a crucial moment in that story when Mulan's father told her This one's late, but I'll bet that when it blooms it will be the most beautiful of all. Mulan's name actually means magnolia in Chinese, which is why the flower is so thematically important in both the Disney movies. For example, the film's costume designer added a large embroidered magnolia blossom to the center of the undergarment Mulan wears as part of her matchmaker outfit. And when she practices her sword work and learns to connect with her chi, she does so near the magnolia tree by the lake. 
Mulan's matchmaker outfit also has embroidered images of the phoenix, which are a nice nod to the crucial role the mythological beast plays for our heroine in this version of the story. The choice to use a phoenix as Mulan's guardian in the new movie is especially interesting because, as we see in the Emperor's throne room, the phoenix sits to his right, while the dragon sits to his left. And of course Mulan's journey takes her to the Imperial City where she saves his life. In China, the phoenix has often been viewed as a symbol of the empress or a female member of the royal family, while the dragon represented the emperor, with the two together representing a harmonious and balanced relationship. In addition to that, in Chinese mythology, the phoenix was originally two separate birds, one male and one female, though they later merged to become one. And so the duality of the phoenix makes it a perfect guardian and symbol for Mulan, who as a woman takes on what's perceived to be a traditionally male role in the story. And there are also so many callbacks and little twists on moments from the original movie. One of my favourites is when Mulan returns to the army to deliver news about Bori Khan's secret plan to attack the Imperial City. Commander Tong says it's foolish to listen to her, given she was dishonest about who she really was. To which Hong Hui replies, You would believe Hua Jun. Why do you not believe Hua Mulan? It's a line that echoes what Mulan said in her own defence in the animated movie. You said you'd trust Ping. Why is Mulan any different? Then when she faces off against Bori Khan without a sword and uses her skills and smarts to take it from him, it's a callback to how she used her quick thinking to wrangle Shan Yu's sword from him, defeating him in the animation. It looks like you're out of ideas. <laughs> Not quite. And the single soldier who survives Bori Khan's attack at the beginning of the film and delivers the news of the defeat to the Imperial City. This soldier is the only survivor. Is a throwback to how Shan Yu decided only one man was needed to deliver his message to the Emperor. How many men does it take to deliver a message? One. As well as Disney Easter eggs, the new movie also includes a few shout outs to the original ballad of Mulan that the story is based on. When the adult Mulan arrives home at the beginning of the film, she tells her parents about two rabbits that were running alongside her while she was out riding. I think one was a male, one was a female. But you know, you can't really tell when they're running that fast. Mulan's comment isn't just a reference to the theme of gender roles in the story. It's also a nice hat tip to the original ballad which ends with the lines, two rabbits running close to the ground. How can they tell if I am male or female? And when we see Mulan's little sister busy at the loom at the start of the film, it's a nod to how the original poem starts off with Mulan herself weaving at a loom. I really like some of the bold creative choices in the new movie, and in my other Mulan video I do a deep dive into the best and worst differences in the live action film compared to Disney's animation. Tap here to watch that next or follow the link in the video description. So did you spot any other easter eggs or interesting details in the new movie? And what were your favourite moments? Comment with your thoughts below. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps and I hugely appreciate it. Tap left for my full Mulan and Disney live action playlist, or tap right for something else you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!